Hello everybody and welcome back to the first Children's Church of September. How many of you have a pair of these? A pair of flip-flops or sandals? How many of you love to wear these all through summer and even spring? Well, good news, it's spring now so you can whip them out. It feels good to get those school shoes and socks off or those heavy shoes that we have to wear through winter. It feels like you're almost going barefoot, but you can wear them wherever. Sandals and flip-flops can be worn almost anywhere. There are lots of good things about flip-flops, but there are also a few bad things. For example, how clean are your feet after a full day of only wearing flip-flops? Not very clean. There's no shoe or sock to keep the dirt out. So by the time you get home, your feet are probably pretty filthy. In Jesus' time, they didn't really wear shoes and socks. Everyone who could afford shoes would wear sandals. So can you imagine how many dirty feet were walking around all the time? In fact, it was such a mess that it created a tradition. If you were invited to somebody's house, one of the servants would wash your feet. Do you think there were many servants volunteering to do this job? Probably not. We've already established how dirty these people's feet must have been. Who would want to wash 20, 50 or even 100 people's dirty feet? Do you think the principal of your school would wash your class's feet? Do you think the president would wash the feet of his or her dinner guests? The washing of feet was servants' work and not their favorite job either. So when Jesus got onto his knees and washed the feet of his disciples, it was a big deal. Jesus was their teacher, their master. They had left everything to follow him. He was way more important than a principal or even the president would be to us. They truly believed that he was the son of God. Let's read about it in John 13, verse 3 to 17. If you have your Bible, read with me. That was John 13, verse 3 to 17. It says, Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need only wash their feet. Their whole body is clean. And you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him. And that was why he had said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightfully so, for this is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should go and do what I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, Servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than those who have sent them. Now that, now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Seeing the man they knew was the Messiah washing their feet sent a very strong message to the disciples. And it sends a very strong message to us too. Jesus is the King of Kings, and if the King of Kings would wash his students' feet, even one of the disciples that he knew was going to betray him, then how should we treat our friends, our neighbours, 
and even our enemies. The washing of feet was a dirty job, one of the dirtiest jobs a servant could do, but not too dirty for Jesus. If Jesus was willing to wash the, men, the feet of the men who followed him, we need to be willing to serve others in the same way. We can be the hands and feet of Jesus in this world. People don't often need their feet washed in this day and age, but we can always find ways to help others. We can start off simple. Small acts of kindness, like helping your mom clean the house or picking up litter at school, even if no one asks you to, listening to a friend who's having a bad day, and when we aren't sure how to help in a situation, God knows, so we can ask for help by praying. Can you think of another act of service that Jesus did for us? Something that he did because he loves us so much? What about dying on the cross? Jesus is looking for boys and girls who are willing to follow his example of love and service to others. Not many people are willing to do that, but those who are are able to find the life that Jesus wants us to have. A life that tastes sweet and brings glory to the name of Jesus. Philippians 2 verse 4 to 8 sums up what we've learned today perfectly. It says, Care about them as you care about yourselves, and think of them the same way Jesus Christ thought. Christ was truly God, but he did not try to remain equal with God. Instead, he gave up everything he had and became a slave. He became like one of us. Christ was humble and he, obe he obeyed God and even died on the cross. Are you willing to follow that example that Jesus set and serve others? Let's pray and worship together. Dear God, Thank you for your example of servanthood. Remind us of this next time we have the opportunity to show this love to others. We're sorry for the times that we thought we were too good to serve others. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.